Good morning, church. All right, let's try that again. Good morning, church. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. I won't ask us to shake hands, but if someone next to you don't know, say hello to one real quick, because some of us don't know everybody. So that's the right side. This is the left side. Hello. We are the church this morning, and that's a great thing. We're a church every Sunday, but it's nice to be here in the sanctuary together. As everybody gathers in here, I'd like to share something with us right away. You might be wondering um, where Pastor John is this morning. Um, these are Pastor John's words that he wrote me. Um, let me read through it, and then we can talk. As many of you have heard, Pastor John's wife, Carol, is dealing with COVID right now, along with a few other complications. She's been hospitalized at Reed since last Sunday evening. Pastor John has been there with her every day. Um, we've texted each other or talked, and because of that, he's going to stay away from other people for a while. So he said we will, we will miss him in person for some days to come, which we will. We all know he is where he needs to be this morning. As a spouse, he needs to be there, and I know that you guys all know that. He continued to go with Pastor John and Carol asked for your prayers as Carol does deal with COVID and tries to get through these difficult days. May God give her strength and all others dealing with COVID. And may God surround the walkers and all of us with healing and hope and the promise of God's presence. These are my words that I wrote at the end of it. I would ask that you um, do not overwhelm Pastor John or Carol with text messages or calls right now. Um, he does have his cell phone, and, and I'm able to talk with him. They'll be in the hospital. We don't know how long. Um, I've been in contact with Joy and Blake Jill and Kurt and Kellen, which is his kids and grandkids, they are doing okay, and I've told them that if they need anything, anything, the church will be here for them. I know I can say that and speak to that on behalf of you. Every text I've talked to Pastor John or received with Pastor John has been a positive thing. The doctors are positive that she's going to make it through, but we need to keep them in our prayers at this time. Many of you know Pastor, Pastor John has shared with many of you about Carol and her transplant and all that, so it does make it a little bit different. But they are positive right now. So I will keep the church informed as the week goes on. Um, I don't have all the details, but if you need to talk, you can always call me. Um, we will try to keep you all in as formed as well as we can. But for right now, we know where Pastor John is where he needs to be. And so... I would ask us this morning as we continue on this service to know that's where he would want all of you to be right now as well. You know as well as I do, Pastor John would say, be in church today. And that's why we're here. So I'm going to ask us to say a prayer with each, with, I'm going to lift up our prayer here right now and um, I ask you just to, to close your eyes and let's pray for a second. Good and gracious God, we come to you on this day with news that some might have known and some might just be hearing. Allow us to digest that in. Knowing that Pastor John and Carol, servants of you for so many years, that they're in your care, that the doctors and nurses are working. We ask you to continue to surround Carol with that healing touch. But not only her, all the people that are dealing with COVID right now, all the people that are in hospitals that need to feel your healing touch, she would want us to pray that as well. We put these into your care. Surround their family. Surround their family at this time. God, we ask all this in the name of your risen Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So I'd ask you to look at your connect when you have it here as well. Today is God's work, our hands. A wonderful Sunday we get to come and be together. Um, the way it's going to work this morning is we'll have a worship here, and then we will head, we'll have to watch a short video like we always do where they put the nice hair nets on and things like that. Um, and then we will head our way down there. Um, it's, it's getting ready as we're here worshiping, and some of it might still need to be a little bit, should, should it, I'm looking for Carol. Should it still be prepped when we get there? We might. Okay, so when I get done worshiping and we watch the video, Carol Brady and Amy Reeves, where's Amy? 
Is she not in here? Here she is. Amy Reese back there. Carol Brady, stand up so people, some people don't know, might not know who you are. They will sort of take over the rest of the morning. So we'll listen to them, to what they tell us to do until we get down there. We do need to sign a waiver, so make sure that you sign a waiver. We are asking as we walk into the fellowship hall to wear the mask because this food is going to be sent all over the world. And so that's just a safe thing to do as we walk in there. Mask, helmet, not helmet. What are these things called? See, I don't have to worry about hair nets. Hair nets, um, face nets, and stuff like that. So, um, so we, will, we will move on with that. So next week, let's talk about Sunday school. Sunday school starts next week with an adult Sunday school class um, that will be offered by Ray Armstrong. So please make sure to put that in your schedule. I'm excited to announce today starts our youth schedule. Many of you have received it in the mail. And tonight we start with dodgeball for 6th through 8th graders. 6th through 8th graders. Um, or 12th graders can come if they want from 6 to 7.30. And then our high school Bible study slash small group will be from 7.30 to 9. 3.45 and K through 2 kick off today as well from 3.45 to 5. If you have any questions about that, you can speak with Katie or Melody. Where are you, Melody? Way in the back, back there. Hi, Melody. Melody, you can speak to them, and Katie's up here in the front. You'll see also their Sunday school news. I know that a couple weeks ago I pleaded, and Pastor John spoke, if you are interested in helping out with Sunday school as a teacher, maybe one week, two weeks, let us know. We'd really appreciate that. Our Monday night Bible study, all our Bible studies are listed there. Choir and handbells are back and back going again. The laundry project's there. Our flowers this morning are given um, by Alice Flora in celebration of her daughter Janelle's. Oh, you didn't put what age her here. That's a nice, on September 11th, um, her birthday. And Pete and Hag, Annabelle Hager in memory of their Raymond, their son Raymond. And then railing is given by Jeff and Amy Chinoweth in celebration of 26 years of marriage. And so that's right there. The back of it, you'll see the giving tree and all that information. It's great to be in worship together. It's great to be here in this place as we come and give thanks and praise to God. But knowing that we do fall short, I ask us to, to stand this morning as we begin with our gathering dialogue. We gather to you, O oh God. We come from different places with different lives, but lives that are centered in you and the grace and goodness that you pour out upon us. Here is the word of life. Here is the water of re rebirth. Here is the promise of mercy. Here is the grateful assembly. Gather us to you, O oh God. We gather. Wet from the waters of baptism, we gather listening to the word. We gather already the body of Christ. Come, Holy Spirit, and gather us in love. Come, Holy Spirit, empower us in faith and life. We gather for worship in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us sing.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. As we live in community with God and one another, for those who are in need of warmth and food, for those struggling to attain education and growth and learning, for those who are in need of shelter and protection, where injustice is in the world and in our communities. In times of sorrow, sickness, and great suffering. When a stranger is in our midst. God, may we, may we be reminded that whatever they need, large or small. Our hymn of praise this morning is God's Work Our Hands. It's being sung really all over the country this morning. Um, this was a song given by the ELCA, which is the no denomination we are part of. Um, so the tune is... Earth and all stars. So once you hear it, it's real easy to catch on to. Um, I was asked, I'll do the solo part first. <laughs> no, no, I won't. So <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> The Lord be with you. Let us pray together. Gracious God, source of all goodness, draw your church. 
church together. We are called by the Holy Spirit to serve and love one another. As children of God, we have been marked by the sign of the cross of Christ. We are claimed gathered, sent for the sake of the world. I invite you to please be seated as we invite Janet forward to read the readings. Good morning. Good morning. The first reading is from Romans, the 12th chapter, starting at the first verse. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good, acceptable, and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function, so we, who are many, are one body in Christ, and individually we are members of one another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit, serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, preserve in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints, extending hospitality to strangers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from the book of John, beginning at, or the 15th chapter, beginning at the first verse. I am the true vine, and my father is a vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I am there bear much fruit because apart from me, you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like the branch and withers. Such branches are gathered and thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends, if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. 
the word of God for the people of God. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. God's Work Our Hands Sunday is probably one of my most favorite Sundays of the year. It's the Sunday where, first of all, I get to wake up a little later because it's only one service, um, so I don't have to wake up so early. I know it's not great for everybody, but for me, that's a good thing. I also love seeing the church. I love seeing us all gathered here um, from different worship styles, different times of worship, and we come together on this Sunday, this Sunday, and we come and we give thanks and praise to God for what he's done for us. I love also serving with all of you. I love it that over the years that I've been here, we've packed thousands of meals. Think about that. Thousands of meals that have gone all around the world and has fed people all everywhere. It's an amazing thing, but then also we've done local things where we've, we've painted walls, we've, we've washed vans, we've cleaned libraries, we've pulled weeds. It's always great to work with fellow people and to make a difference in a worldly idea and also on a local idea. God's work, our hands Sunday, our hope, I hope that you find value as well in this day. That we all look alike. We all are here for one purpose. But I must admit, this past year and a half, as the world has been turned upside down, as the world has been working its way through this thing called COVID or the, the worldly pandemic, this past year and a half as people's lives have been changed, jobs have been lost, Kids' education is being changed and harmed every day. Families are losing loved ones and are not, aren't able to be with them. People are becoming more divided over little things than they were even two and a half years ago, which has led to anger, frustration, outburst, not wanting to be with other people because they don't think like I do or act like I do. It's a hard time. So I have to admit, since last God's Work Our Hands Sunday, since I find, my, since I find myself these days, these great hands, and look at your own, they're great hands of God, Many of them have worked in soup kitchens, have packed meals, have pulled weeds, have painted buildings, have, have went out of this building and, and gone to do your work as a teacher, as a trash, pick, pa, trash person that picks up our garbage, as a doctor, as a nurse, as an organist, as a realtor. These hands, I don't know about you, I've noticed them raising to the sky many times this past year and a half. And they have, I promised, worked in many different ways as yours has. But I've also noticed so much that my hands over this last year and a half has been raised to the sky. Raised to the sky out of gratitude of where God is, but they've been raised in prayer. They've been raised high in prayer and prayer for God just to use his power, to use God's word and take this whole thing away. They've been raised in the air to, to say to God, God, please stop it because people are hurting from this pandemic we're living in. They've been raised as my knees are on the ground and I'm praying for our children that you all know I'm not telling secrets that lives have been changed. Their experiences of what's going on in their schools have never been seen. My prayers of those people who have lost hope. Lost hope in the midst of this pandemic we find ourselves in. Prayers for families and friends that I know and you know 
that can't even talk about it without getting mad at each other. These hands are raised with a cry for God to do his work. To do his work. For God to come down and reign. The God that we know that we say created everything. I say, God, come down and reign in this world today. Remove this virus so that I can get back to my life. But then also that you can all get back to yours and, and everything get back to normal. We can go back to having 45, 50 kids on a Sunday throwing a ball at each other's head in the middle of the dark at youth group. That we can go back and play in this game that called death ball where we just throw the ball. And it's not out of anger. It's out of Christian love just to get that other person. That we can go back to where God's work our hands to where we had so many people that we, we, we finished it in five minutes it seemed like. That we can get back to, to normal to where I can go to my friend's house and not worry about if they think, oh, what do they think about the virus? I'm being honest this morning. I come here and these hands that have done so much work like yours have been lifted in prayer. And I'm on my knees in prayer to this vine we hear about in our gospel. This vine that I'm pretty sure the rising you had to dance the vine in the branches. This vine that we hear about in this gospel, this vine that gives us life, that gives us life, and I pray daily, more than I ever have, that it continues to give me life in the midst of my lostness right now, it continues to give me hope, that way I can give hope to all of you. That continues to give me hope so that I can give hope to my kids that are going through something they've never gone through that I don't even know how to give it to them. That I can give hope to a family that wasn't able to be there when they lost a loved one. I raise my hands and I sit on my knees and I pray to God, continue to give me this hope you speak about in our gospel today. This hope that I can only find from the vine. And it's in these moments... It's in these moments when I turn to God with my hands raised and on my knees that I'm reminded in the midst of all this sorrow, in the midst of the worries I have, that God shows up. In the midst of my concerns and all my frustrations, that I have to imagine if I'm feeling them, you're feeling them, that God shows up. And that we need Sundays just like this one. To remind us that in the grand scheme of everything that's going on, our shirts say it best. God's work. Meaning God is working in the midst of all of this pain and suffering. And we have to use our hands. The great emphasis is on God's work. And that's why we make it so bold. But our hands are so important these days. Our hands are what's going to bring hope back to this world that we're in. Just in the community that we live in, in the neighborhood we live in, in the family that we see, that we can look at things and say, I'm connected to that vine, and I'm not letting something take me down. That I'm connected to that vine because I'm a branch. But we all know that vine has been many other things as well. We are showing up and providing, as we saw today in our script, in our prayer for the day, we are setting an example for the community around us that in the midst of whatever this world throws at us, we are people of God and we are not going to lose hope. Because hope is what's going to give us strength for the next day. Hope is what's allowing me to announce what I did at the beginning of this service and, and know that hope is in the midst of that whole terrible tragedy that's going on, but not just her to many places all around. We need to know that we are the branches that grow off this living vine and this living God. And this is most certainly true. It's not to be heard in the midst of the world today because the other option is not good for you or for me or for the world. If we understand that we are the branches and God is the vine, that has to motivate us. Which means it's motivating us, that means that it's right out of love, and that's good. That is what produces all things is love. That is why we're here today. But it's easy sometimes to forget that we are those branches are attached to. 
When I have my hands raised and I'm on my knees, I sometimes forget that I'm attached to a vine that won't leave me there. I'm attached to a vine that says, go out and do the work. That's when we find ourselves frustrated or worried or hurting or concerned. And this is going to happen. I can only imagine I'm not the only one that has lifted my hands over this last year and a half. Or at least thoughts or prayers and wondered, why? Come on, God. I just want to play one more game or I just want to be with my team one more time. This is why we need days like this. To remind it of the work that needs to be done in the world around us. And we are here to do it. Now some of you might not be able to stay and some of you might think, well, what do I do next? And sometimes it's our hands are to make a phone call to a friend and maybe laugh with them. Let's not forget that. Or maybe our hands is to send a text to someone and say, hello, how are you doing? I haven't seen or heard from you in a while. Or the simply to wave to someone as you walk past them. Or to share stories with your kids and friends and neighbors. To invite someone out for a beer or dinner you know that's having a hard time right now and just listening. You know, branches are a funny thing. They can be used as shade, but they can also provide fire to eat. They can provide shelter, and they can be provided for support to people. They can wrap together almost like a hug in each other. And they can be so many things. We are the hands and feet in this world. It's a proclamation. It's a proclamation and a privilege for us to be that to so many people. So let's go get better time, better times than now to raise. Let's, let's go and know that there will be better times. And we will continue to raise our hands and, and say to God in prayer, please come. But we know that that prayer doesn't fall on deaf ears. That fall does not fall on, that words do not fall on deaf ears. Brothers and sisters, this past week I spent time at a, at a conference and on my flight home yesterday, I had someone sitting next to me and they asked me, and I'm not, if you know me, I'm not very shy, so I start talking and next thing you know they're telling me where they're going, I tell them where I'm going, and, and I'm telling them about Sunday. And I'm sharing with them and they're like, why would you do something like that? How are you gathering people like this and why are you doing it? And it gave me where I was headed this morning. Because she started to share stories of what she went through the last year and a half. Her stories are our stories. But then she ended and she just told me her frustrations and her, and her anger and she just couldn't let it go. And I tried to talk about the hope and all that, but it wasn't there. Sometimes I find that's us. We know the hope is in the cross. We know the hope is, 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 is far off, but it can be right now. But it takes our hands to make it manageable. I mean, it takes our hands to make it real in the world that we live. So I challenge you. I give you the opportunity. I give you the privilege to go out and to be this new, new word to the community we live in. But no, it's hard. It's hard. I fall down that hole many times. But it's when in those holes I get on my knees and I start to pray and I have to do better. We have to do better. For the world, because the world needs us. Because we bring the hope in the midst of the hopelessness. May God be with us as we share together today. As we share in our, the hands and feet of Christ here today. To go out so others can see our good works glorify our God in heaven. Amen. Our song sings it for us today also. We are one in mission, so I invite us to stand as we sing our we are one in mission. We are all one in mission.
The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share the sign of peace that we become accustomed to by a wave or a peace sign. Peace. Peace to you that are watching online right now. I'm so grateful for you to be here online. We gather, get back together right there on page nine with our prayers. Almighty God, giver of all things, with gladness we give thanks for all your goodness. We bless you for the love which we've created and which sustain us from day to day. We praise you for the gift of your Son, our Savior, through whom you have made known with your will and grace. We thank you for the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, for your holy church, for the means of grace, for the lives of all faithful and good people, and for the hope of the life to come. Help us to treasure in our hearts all that our Lord has done for us and enable us to show our thankfulness by lives that are wholly given to your space. All these things and whatever else you see that we need. Grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you in the in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, Let us sit there for a second. Let us sit here before we go into the business side and breathe in the Spirit as we go to do the God's work. Know that you are making a difference in giving hope to the world around us. By the meals we pack here in Richmond, Indiana, will affect people all over the world. God's work, our hands. What a great way to be the church. I invite you to please be seated as, Carol, am I supposed to show this video? All right. This was Carol Brady modeled for this. This is Carol Brady here. Oh, yeah, before the video? Come on down. We're going to have you right up here then. Yep, that microphone right there. Brett? Right? No. This is Brett from Rise Against Hunger, the one that sort of orchestrates everything, so we'll let him speak. Can you hear me? Oh, there we go. That's better. <laughs> All right, yeah, my name is Brett Bell. Um, I'm with Rise Against Hunger. Um, I'll be facilitating the event that's about to go on, you know, here in the next 20 minutes. Um, but uh, I just want to thank all you guys for showing up, and uh, specifically Carol Brady and Amy Reeves. You guys called with me for, like, the past month to make sure everything was come, working out all right. So uh, thank you to those two, but also I would like to take the time to thank each and every single one of you individuals for coming out here and volunteering your time and taking advantage of this unique meal packaging experience. Um, and the reason I say it's unique is because we are all here with a common goal, and that is to end world hunger. And that is why our nonprofit is here. Um, today, we'll be packaging over 25,000 meals that could be shipped to anywhere in the world. And although this may be your first meal, pack meal packaging experience uh, with us at Rise, it is not, is by far not the first for First English uh, Lutheran churches. Uh, you, all have, you all have helped us package over 40,000 meals since 2016. And um, what I hope you all understand is that you, each and every single one of you, is essential to our mission. Rise Against Hunger would not be a thing if it wasn't for you folks that would like to put in the time and help those that are in need overseas. You know, people that you, you may never ever see, but you're here because you want to help them. And uh, I'm going to touch on this later, but no matter what the scenario is in life, food is always a necessity. And that is not an option for a lot of people. If they just do not have the food to get them through an everyday life, you know, and that's the only thing they can focus on. Now let's see, Rise Against Hunger has provided over 70, has provided relief and assistance in over 78 different countries and in areas that you may have never even heard of as well. And we do so through our three pathways to end a hunger and that is nourishing lives, empowering communities and responding to emergencies. And uh, to keep this brief for you, but also because I feel this is very important in today's world, but responding to emergencies is, 
is huge. It seems like every time you turn on the news, there's another catastrophe going on in some country in the world, or even just a small community. And as I said earlier, if it could be a natural disaster, it could be man-made, maybe a community is trying to rebuild or a government is in shambles. Food is always necessity and that is why we are here today. So I hope, I hope that you take advantage of this, this experience and carry it with you throughout the next week and the month and think about like, oh wow, what I'm doing right now is feeding, most of our food does go to school, so most, what I'm doing right now is feeding these children. And there's a great story, I don't know if many of you know this, but in developing nations it's not common for families and households to send their daughters to school because they feel it would be much more beneficial for them to stay at home and work, and they only send the sons. Since Rise Against Hunger has started distributing our meals to those areas, that number has increased now. Young girls are now being sent to schools because of our services, and we are providing food because now they know they are not only receiving education, but they are receiving three full meals a day, which they would not receive anywhere else. So that is why we are here today. So I hope, as I said, you carry this, this experience with you and be proud of what you're doing. And I am honored and excited to be able to share this experience with you and just walk you through it. But with that, are we ready to get started? <laughs> all right, let's go. So yeah, right here is a video. It'll, it has like basically all the instructions that you'll need for, um, thank you to the generous volunteers as well, the help that came in at 8.30 today, that helped us set up a lot of it. Um, but this will just be instructions for what we're about to do. We have a couple different stations. Uh, we'll have, I believe, a sign-in sheet has been passed around. So if you're participating, I hope you just signed in. And uh, you'll walk over to the check-in station. You will grab a hairnet. If your beard is longer than two inches, you will grab a beard net too. Then you'll sanitize your hands. Oh, we have masks up there as well. We would, li we would like everybody to wear a mask, if that's all right, um, when you're working with the food. Um, and what's that? What else? Sanitize your hands, grab a pair of gloves, and you can find a station. So uh, I think we're all set. Don't do anything until you get instructions down there, right? Yeah, yeah, don't start anything yet. <laughs> I'll let you know. <laughs> well, they're kind of answering the truth. Hey, I get it. We'll, we'll get working right away. <laughs> stations at the event. Let's start with the funnels. Four to five people can work together at each funnel. If you're at a funnel, you always need to be wearing gloves and a hairnet. Put one person per ingredient on each side of the table and then start bagging. First, put an unopened vitamin pack in the bag and slide that bag under the funnel. Add a level cup of soy, then a level scoop of veggies. Top it off with a level cup of rice. Remember, rice always goes last. Please do your best not to spill. We can't use dirty rice. Call for a sustainer when you need more ingredients. Place each filled bag in the runner bin, and when the bin is full, yell, runner! Runners take bins to the scales, then bring empty bins back to the funnels. At the scale station, weigh your bag. It should be somewhere between 389 to 394 grams. Bags will come in heavy and light, which is normal. That's why you're there. To correct that, add or remove rice to adjust the weight. Then place the weighed bag in the sealer's bin. At the sealing machine, ensure the dial is in the middle around the floor mark. To seal, flatten the top of the bag, removing excess air. Seal along the dotted line. Press, hold, and wait for the red light to turn on for about three seconds. If the scale or sealer isn't working properly, tell your event facilitator. Sealed bags then go to the counting station. Double check to make sure the bags are sealed. If they aren't completely sealed, return the bags to the sealing station. Place two sealed bags on each square. When all the squares are full, load the bags into the box. Place three bags vertically and two bags horizontally and alternate that pattern. When the last bag is loaded, close the box, tape it shut, and add a tracking paper. Finally, bring your full box to the finished box area. Okay, let's review. 
If you're working on a funnel or a scale, be sure to wear a hairnet and gloves. At the funnel station, rice always goes last. Each bag should weigh between 389 and 394 grams. Please double check all bags for leakage. And if you haven't signed in, please do so before you begin working. Looks like you've got it. Thanks for partnering with us to fight hunger. Each and every one of these bags helps someone in need around the world. Without your help, this wouldn't be possible. All right, and that did seem like a lot of instructions, but I promise you it's not that difficult. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, so you got, yep. Uh, yep, I'll head back there and I'll see you all back. All righty. I invite you to stand for our sending right. In worship, God gathered us as a people of God and calls us to go forth and share the name of Christ. We are Christ to serve. Women. We are freed in Christ to serve. Through the word, God accomplishes us We are freed in Christ to serve. In the world, God goes ahead of us to places in need and calls us to join the work. We are freed in Christ to serve. May your hands be a vessel for God's work. Go forth today and every day to love and serve God, to love and serve your neighbor, and to be God's hands in the world. Go forth today and every day. Brothers and sisters, today especially, go in peace and serve the Lord. I want to remind you, if you did not sign a waiver, please make sure you do on the way here. And if you showed up today and thought, I didn't plan on doing this, we'd still like to have you. So just sign a waiver and come on down. So.